The courier kindly picked up the woman's mobile phone. Suddenly a giant rat monster appeared and flew over. It cut off the courier's arm. The two of them were stunned. A lot of blood splattered on the courier's arm. But the woman didn't want to save him and quickly closed the door. The woman's name is Rona. Rona is a lonely woman. She came home from get off work that day. She finally sat her day down and rested for a while. Suddenly there was a rapid knock on the door. Outside the door, a cool girl dressed in an alternative style said that someone was going to kill her. She begged Rona to let her in. Rona opened the door without hesitation. The girl said her name was Cassie. The person who is chasing her is not a human but a monster called Kadra. While comforting her, Lorna took out her mobile phone and dialed 911. Cassie grabbed the phone and threw it out. Rona was shocked. Cassie told Lorna sorry, they only have 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, no matter how Rona blocks it, that monster will come in and kill her. She was sorry for bringing disaster to Lorna. Then Cassie changed the subject. She told Lorna why not let's chat for a while. Cassie sat her down on her own. Lorna thought she was very rude. After a while, there was another rapid knock on the door. Lorna opened the door and saw that it was the courier. The courier kindly picked up the phone for Rona. Suddenly a giant monster appeared and cut off the courier's arm. Cassie hurriedly closed the door and pulled Lorna aside. Cassie said indifferently, I told you there's a monster out there. Then she picked up Lorna's family photo and started chatting. Lorna said what Cassie did was incredible. Why can't she act like nothing happened? Lorna opens the curtains. Suddenly a monster that looked like a big rat came in. Lorna screamed while stabbing the monster with a knife. She drove the big mouse out like this. Cassie still looks relaxed. While drinking, she asked about Lorna's work and family. Rona chatted with her. She used the knives on hand to make a home may mace for self-defense. Cassie suddenly asked Lorna if she had anything to eat. Rona remembered that she just ordered a pizza. Soon the takeaway guy came. Cassie doesn't care if the delivery boy is hunted by a monster. She talked about her relationship with monsters. Cassie is a night bartender. She's as lonely as Lorna. It's just that she doesn't have as good a job as Lorna. Cassie has to live in a rat-infested tenement apartment. One day she came home from get off work and saw a mouse. Caught in a mouse trap she set herself. The mouse bit off its claws in order to survive but soon fell into another trap. The death of the mouse made Cassie blame herself. Since then, a huge rat monster has appeared next to her. Lorna thought Cassie's story was a bit ridiculous. At this moment, the delivery boy arrived here with pizza. Lorna could only climb up to the attic and ask the delivery man to return the same way with the pizza. But he was very principled and had to ask Lorna to sign for anything. The two of them talked back and forth for a long time. In the end, Lorna had no choice but to compromise and let him leave the pizza at the door. However, after chatting with the delivery boy for a few words, Rona felt much better. The delivery boy waved goodbye to Lorna and got into the car. Suddenly a lot of blood splattered in the delivery boy's car. So the talkative delivery boy also became the food of the monster. Lorna took the pizza back and opened it to see. There was a line of words written in blood in the box. Come and meet me in the cabin behind. Lorna delivered pizza to Cassie and then picked up the mace and came to the black room. Lorna saw the monster. The monster even greeted her politely. The monster said that it just ate the delivery boy and felt a little uncomfortable. It also reminds Lorna to stay away from Cassie. It turns out the rats weren't here to hunt Cassie. It's just an accessory to Cassie. Cassie is a lunatic with lots of negative energy. She likes to drag strangers down. Rona chased the monster away before it finished speaking. Lorna then went to Cassie to ask the truth. Cassie is looking through Lorna's photo album and looking through her personal belongings. Rona suddenly remembered, early in the morning when she went to buy coffee, Cassie is right behind her. It turns out that Cassie has been eyeing Lorna for a long time. She deliberately followed Lorna home and brought the monster here. Lorna didn't understand that she didn't offend Cassie. Why would Cassie do this to herself? She didn't expect that Cassie, a perpetrator, would be even more wrong than Lorna. She said she just felt that Lorna was as lonely as she was. She just wants to be friends with Lorna. But Lorna only focused on finding weapons and didn't care about herself at all. Lorna doesn't listen to her whining. Then she must be like those people and deserve to be eaten by monsters. When Rona heard this, her eyes immediately widened. She asked Cassie how many people she had killed. Cassie didn't answer and just slammed the door and left. She released the rat monster. In her opinion, anyone who doesn't make friends with her should die. Lorna raised her maze and complained about the monster staining her carpet. The monster is quite polite. It suddenly stopped attacking and apologized to Lorna. Lorna let him sit aside and gave him some refreshments. It turns out that the monster doesn't want to kill anyone and even likes to chat. It picked up the phone and enthusiastically asked Lorna if there was anyone she wanted to contact before she died. Mouse told Lorna, Cassie is lonely and poor. It just so happened that her parents had just passed away. 
so she created the inner demon of Mouse out of intense grief. Cassie goes around looking for someone to chat with, throw her own negative energy to others and leave in style. During the conversation, the mouse noticed that Lorna had a large locked box. Lorna said that what is locked in this box is her own monster. Lorna's monster is a giant cat. The difference is Cassie escapes from the rat monster. Lorna gets along well with her monsters. Lorna could have unleashed her big cat to fight with the mice, but she didn't do that because Lorna feels that her monster belongs only to herself. She shouldn't let her negative emotions affect others. Lorna has also experienced heartbreak. She also has people she feels guilty about, but she didn't choose to escape. Instead, face your own negative emotions and choose to reconcile with them. This conversation awakened the big mouse. It doesn't want to kill anymore and feels so tired. From then on, this bloodthirsty monster finally found a safe haven. The story of this episode ends here. Let's look at the second story. This is a photo of a father struggling to lift his child. The eyes of the father in desperate situation are full of sorrow. Photographer James won a humanitarian award for this photo. Today is his highlight moment. James is busy signing autographs for fans. His wife Looney, she called her son who was alone at home to pay attention to his safety. Looney booked a nice restaurant. Although James won the award, he has never been happy. At this moment, a mysterious man suddenly came over and took a photo of James and his wife. James took the photo and discovered the distance in the photo seems to be different from just now. The photographer was obviously very close to them. Why do the photo show distant views? They were very curious and came to the photographer's position in the photo. They found a second photo on a shelf nearby. In photo, exactly where they are at the moment and posing in exactly the same pose. Looney guesses this is some kind of street magic. Maybe there are hidden cameras on the street. James looked up. The sign says San Miguel Street. Some unbearable memories suddenly came to his mind. There it is also a photo under the road sign. The photo says, save me. Ludi still thinks it's just a prank. Then she took off her shoes and posed. James flipped through the photos and found. The posture inside is the same as Looney's posture at this moment. James felt a little uneasy. He saw the cemetery not far away. James's comparative discovery. That's the angle in the photo. On the tombstone is a short excerpt from the Old Testament of the Bible. I heard someone calling from both sides of the Ulan River. This passage brought his thoughts to the origin of the award-winning photo a few years ago. James confesses to Looney. That year, there was fighting in the jungles of San Miguel. Warlords shot at civilians indiscriminately. James as a war correspondent. He was dodging bullets. He pressed the shutter frantically to record this tragic scene. Later James saw an injured father, trapped in fast currents. This father desperately held his young son up. He waved to James and asked to save the child. But James was afraid that he would be hit by a bullet. James pressed the shutter hesitantly. He recorded the last scene of the father and son before they left. Their lives brought James the peak of his career. But since that day, James has often suffered from insomnia. He could have saved father and son. What happened today doesn't seem like a coincidence. He prefers to believe that it is the revenge of the undead. Loney found the fourth photo next to the tombstone. The one in the photo is actually their son. The couple immediately drove home. The son Saturday up from the sofa. His son looked at the photo and felt confused. Are there other people hiding in this room? Suddenly the whole house started shaking. The tragic photos exploded one after another. They seemed to be accusing James of refusing to save him. Then the camera behind them suddenly started to work. The camera took a photo of a panicked family of three. James was about to take the photo. He looked up and saw his son drowned in the swimming pool. He jumped into the swimming pool quickly, but the son disappeared suddenly. James can't find him anywhere. Suddenly he heard his son calling his name on the shore. He followed the call and swam to the shore. But the son's figure turned into the father in that photo. He was vomiting blood and laughing so horribly. Angry James pulled him into the water. James desperately pushed him into the water. Meanwhile, Looney inside the house picked up the photo. She suddenly screamed. Then she rushed into the swimming pool and screamed at her husband to stop. James slowly regained his senses amidst Rooney's cries. When he looked again, he found that the evil ghost underwater had turned into his comatose son. He helplessly held the child who had lost vital signs. The camera suddenly started to capture this irreplaceable classic scene. This is a work from an innocent soul. This story alludes to 1993, photographer Kevin Carter's Hungry Sudan. At that time, Kevin Carter stood quietly in the distance. He waited 20 minutes to take the tragic photo that shocked the world and he drove away the vulture. Kevin watched as the hungry little girl staggered away. This photo won him a Pulitzer Prize. The photo also sparked strong reactions from people across the country. Everyone is condemning him for not saving his life. In fact, the little girl is wearing a United Nations rescue bracelet on her hand. 
There are also a large number of United Nations officials nearby who are distributing food. All this shows that the girl was rescued in the end. In the end, Kevin Carter...